Are and we up? are live, everybody. Welcome, Grateful Chef here, Eric Eisenbud. Welcome again to my kitchen. We are having an awesome, really fun night that I am not cooking. How about that? This is a whole uh, different thing. It's kind of like uh, Eric Eisenbud. Kind of like uh, fondue, you know. You get gather yeah. around, people do their own thing. They're doing their own cooking. This is like Korean fondue almost. It's, Korean barbecue. The prep is super simple. I'm lucky to have a Korean market, H Mart, that's really close. Well, not really close, but close enough. I drive for food. I don't care how far it is. So I'm able to pick up some accompanying ingredients uh, for this meal. I am using uh, an old friend, dry aged beef, in this meal just because I have it. And uh, it's a really cool, exciting thing. We have a loaded house tonight. We have one, two, three, four, five guests in-house, one of whom did that I, what I asked everybody to do, picked up the phone and said, hey, I'm usually not in town on Wednesday. I'm in town Wednesday today. You, can, we, can I come over? You got an extra seat? And here he is. Mark, I'm really glad you're here, my man. As am I. Had an awesome crawfish boil at his house. So. Fourth of July. Oh. Very cool. And then we house. have some of Lynn's uh, nephews. Their the friends, family, the girlfriend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, family. So the whole family, it's awesome. Cooking is a family thing. This is a communal kind of thing. I thought I was trying to think about what other cuisines have something like this. So of course there's the fondue thing. Uh, not really a cuisine, but I know like down in Cajun country, um, you know somebody fires up the, the deep fryer to do a fried turkey. Every neighbor brings something over to fry, even if they don't eat it together. They just, hey, I got the fryer going. So people will bring whatever they, you know, they have to fry. Crawfish boils, of course, not really cooking together, but eating together. So this is a really fun thing to do. Uh, pretty casual. I am not even wearing my chef's coat tonight. Very cash. I'm sporting my new apron. Which I'm really happy about. And uh, yeah, it doesn't take much. You know, make me happy. And I, of course, am grateful that you guys are all here for another episode of Cooking in the Kitchen, the Grateful Chef Kitchen with me, Eric Eisenbud. So anyone who is seeing the show for the first time, please don't hesitate to shout out and say hello. Tell us where you're from. And of course, all my old friends who have uh, viewed every week or each and every week or as many weeks as they can or even once, you know, I'm grateful that you guys are here because without you, there is no me. So. I'm really happy about that. And of course, I would be remiss not to uh, say thank you to Lynn, our producer, camera woman, and wind beneath my wings. Hi, so, everyone. Yeah. Hi, Lynn. Do hey, you have anybody I've charming? Lots, I've got lots of hoes. What do you got? Isaac Ramirez. Isaac, thanks for coming in. Moore, Oklahoma. Yeah. Um, hey, Paul Tavoni's here. Happy New Year. Shocker. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> uh, Anthony Lopinto, Go Chef, Bobby Thank Tom you, Chef. Here. Bobby. Bobby was here last week. Yes, Bobby, yeah. Bobby brought us. Bobby, we did the, the lamb jam awesome. last week. That was awesome. Yes. Uh, Our regards to Amanda. Yes, we also had Gary. Gary. And Jim Parked Taylor. his bike on the side of the road to watch me on his cell phone. <laughs> you betcha. Thank you. Uh, we got Jim Taylor. He said next time you're up in uh, New Hampshire, we'll have cooking like weekend. Let's do it. Uh, and then we have Nino. Nino, cheese guy extraordinaire. I want to visit. I'm going to visit your work. <laughs> Let me know your hours tomorrow. Um, anyway, so we are doing Korean barbecue. Another Asian cuisine of the long list of Asian cuisines that I like to cook. Chinese food being one of them. We're going to get to that. We're going to, uh, we're going to do some uh, Chinese cooking, some uh, real... Kung Pao chicken, Gong Bao Ji Ding, it's phenomenal. It's nothing like that you usually get. And uh, we'll do a whole Chinese meal, I promise. I love doing it. Um, we, uh, I also like to do Thai, you know. I've got my friend, Mike Trainer. hopefully he's looking, he's watching, uh, who has really turned me on to what Thai food is really all about. So I'm really uh, looking forward to doing some Thai. Maybe I'll have him come in here and we'll do it together. That would be awesome. And uh, so now we have Korean. And Korean is a very meat-heavy uh, cuisine. 
marinated. They love pickled stuff. Uh, and I'm going to get to that. Lynn, you have something to say? Yeah, I asked Eric what our uh, vegetable was for the night. He said lettuce. <laughs> lettuce. There you go. Lettuce. No, so lettuce. I'm going to talk about, the first thing I want to talk about is when you go to a Korean restaurant, you sit down, they're so friendly and accommodating, and they're, they're happy people, and they love to feed you. So they will bring to the table what is called banchan, B-A-N-C-H-A-N, banchan. And these are little tiny, little bites of mostly pickled, pickled items. And uh, so I have got a selection of pickled items. The most common and the most popular is kimchi. So kimchi is um, Napa cabbage, and sometimes it's made with oysters in it, and uh, this one is not. Um, it also has some scallions in there, and what they typically do is they'll put it in a clay pot, and they'll take the head of Napa cabbage, separate the leaves, and they'll actually rub the uh, chili powder, it's not even a powder, it's flake, and some of the sauce, that it's garlic and um, a whole bunch of other things, gojujang, which is a spicy paste, and they will rub it in between each and every leaf, and then they'll take the head and they'll sink it down into a clay pot, and traditionally they will bury the pot for months, and it ferments, and fermented food is really good for you. You want to live to 90? A lady used to come into my hot dog place, and we used to get sauerkraut in a five-gallon bucket. And she didn't want the sauerkraut, she wanted the juice. And we were happy to give it to her. She would drink sauerkraut juice. She was uh, ahead of her time. You know, it's uh, really good for you. Uh, so that's what the kimchi is. Spicy, it's crunchy, it's salty, it's sweet, it's really, really nice. The next thing we have is Korean fish cakes. Now, when I hear fish cakes, I think something really stinky and fishy and nasty. And it's basically a, shri a sh uh, fish paste. And they make it into a thin sheet. And they cut it into pieces. Again, that red is the, is the chilies, the uh, chili powder. And it is not fishy at all. It's actually really nice. It's soft. Some might have a textural issue with it, but I really like it. And it's really tasty. So uh, this is another popular and common uh, is the seaweed salad that you find at Japanese restaurants a lot. Um, Japan and Korea are like sister and brother. I mean, they really support most Korean places will do sushi. So it's not uncommon to have Japanese ingredients. So we've got some of that. We have pickled cucumber. It's got some red pepper, just like regular red bell pepper. It's got sesame seeds, it's sweet, it's crunchy. Real easy to make this. I, in the uh, posture of transparency, did not make any of this because it's so easy for me to pick it up. And this is not the star of the show tonight. This is all accompaniment. And I saw this, I never even saw them before in my life. They kind of look like... Larva? Larva. Yeah, I see this. I mean, it's like... What that is, is a Chinese artichoke. And this too is pickled, it's sweet, it's crunchy. Uh, if you can get past what it looks like, uh, it's uh, actually pretty pretty darn good. So all these are gonna get onto the, onto the table. And uh, these are typically eaten with the meal. So sometimes, you know, you'll go to a, well, always you go to a Korean restaurant and they'll put this stuff on the table and us Westerners think, oh, it's an appetizer. It's not really an appetizer, although I can't let it sit there and not eat it. So I eat it anyway. But it's, uh, you know, you put it on the table, and we're going to make lettuce wraps, which is typical of Korean barbecue. Um, we're going to wrap it in lettuce and put a, some of the fermented stuff in there. It's uh, really cool. Very healthy cuisine. So we also have Sandra Fife, and she said this is one of her favorites. Hey, and Sandra. Got a big old hello from Nicholas Johnson. Nicholas. You're the man. Take a break, buddy. <laughs> Been a little busy. Um, anyway, so here's what we have. We have two meats. Um, two recipes. So I have four plates because we have six meats here. So what we have here is the Korean national dish. It is called bulgogi. This is um, ribeye, and it's typical that they use ribeye. And I just so happen to have some dry-aged ribeye in-house. 
and I used a very old school slicer. Maybe you saw my teaser post um, where I used that old slicer, and if it's a little bit frozen, it, it helps. So this is basically marinated. It's got shiitake mushroom, dried shiitake mushroom that I reconstituted. It's got onion, it's got sesame seeds. I have the ingredients here. I'm gonna show you how to make the, the marinade. Um, I'm even gonna show you how to slice a little bit of the frozen beef, just so I can show you, but we're not gonna go through the, the whole thing. So this is the bulgogi, Korean national dish. Um, it's really sweet, it caramelizes, and typically you're gonna make bulgogi and you're gonna cook it in a pan on the stove. So you're going to mix the whole thing, it gets presented on a plate, we serve it with rice, and um, that's how you'll get it in a restaurant. Tonight we're going to just Korean barbecue it right at the table. It's pretty cool. Uh, so that is that. So that can go to the table as this. The next item up for bid is called galbi or kalbi. It's, I've seen it spelled different ways. This is basically short rib. And I had the bone-in short rib. I basically butterflied it off the bone into nice thin strips. Let's see if I can pick this up for you. Let's see, this is a, so typically, so this was on the bone like this, and I basically just butterflied it open. I mean, this is marinated short rib. Can't be bad. So again, the marinade for this is very similar to the marinade for bulgogi. A couple different variations but the main ingredients are the same. So we're gonna be able to put all this. Yes, dear? I just had some, I was trying to zoom in. Yeah, and I and, moved it. And, yeah. All right. Uh -huh. Anyway. Uh, we also have Ted Re Todd Redman with us tonight. He says hello. Hey, Todd. Right. I'm gonna call you Speed Racer. Yes, and awesome. we also have Jay Tepper watching. Thanks, Jay. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do this uh, before I start. So again, lettuce leaves. I wanted to make sure you know that we wrap them in lettuce leaves. This is a nice red tip lettuce. You want something nice and tender. Um, so iceberg lettuce probably wouldn't be okay. Romaine, the evil romaine, as long as it's from a safe area, you can go for romaine too. But I went with the red leaf. It's what they had at the uh, Korean market. Typical serving also with Korean barbecue. This is a bean paste right here, the lighter brown, and it's basically soybean and it's salty, very salt. So that's going to be your salt element. And this is that gojujang that I told you about. It's the Korean chili paste. I call it Korean ketchup. It goes on everything. If you like shirasha, this gojujang will blow your mind. It's sweet. It's heat. It's a really great combination. So we have one of these at every seat at the table. So, hmm. And here's how you buy it. The gojujang comes in a tub. This is the small tub at the Asian market. They have them in tubs like this. Giant. Um, and this is the donjang. This is the, the bean paste. Salt element. And this stuff will last forever in your fridge. So, now, I took some dried shiitake mushrooms. And I'm going to show you how I buy those. Right here. They come dried in a package. They're really awesome, full of umami. We love that umami. And basically what you'll do is you soak it in hot tap water for a couple of minutes. They get soft and pliable. They're back to life. And you can just smell the mushroom flavor. So what happens is in the bulgogi, especially if you're cooking it in a pan, um, you are going to take the shiitakes, like pile them up and you're just going to slice them nice and thin just like this and you're going to put those once you make the marinade once you put the meat in you're going to put those in with it with some sesame seeds and that goes with it and then you're going to also do some sliced onion when you do that and I did it in the the stuff we're cooking tonight so you can do it because the mushrooms and onions We'll cook right on the uh, grill. All right. Yes, dear. And you have Joe from Southern Co Coastal Cooking. Joe, not surprised. Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining us, buddy. Happy New Year to everybody. I was remiss. if I, I would be remiss if I didn't wish everybody a Happy New Year. 
And I uh, hope you had a safe one, a good one, and are ready to kick 2019's booty. That's I am. It's going to be a good year. Good year. We're getting right to this marinade now. So I have it in a blender. A very powerful, noisy blender. Yeah, I'm going to try and be mellow. So <laughs> four ounces soy sauce. I, I got Korean soy sauce. It's a little bit saltier. I want it to be authentic and true. So Korean soy sauce, you can use regular kikuman. This is four ounces of sake. I told you the, ja the Japanese and the Koreans love each other. So we use sake. Interesting ingredient. Lemon lime soda. They love Sprite. So we're going to do four ounces of Sprite. And um, it's just, I, I don't know why, but we're going to put it in. Nice four ounces of Sprite. Hmm. Awesome. Four tablespoons. Sugar, regular white sugar, going in there. A right, very key ingredient in Korean cuisine right here. Coming up. This is an Asian pear. So we've all heard about how using pineapple, especially in meat, the enzymes in pineapple break down the meat and tenderize it. That's exactly what this does. So I don't need the whole thing. Believe it or not, this is about a medium. I've seen them just giant. And when you get them in the store, they have this really cool like foam netting around them. They treat these things like royalty in the market. So I'm going to go with, I guess, about a, about a half. I want to peel it. So I'm going to peel it real quick. It's got a pretty thick skin. It's uh, a lot of tannin in the skin. So it could, it could be a little bit bitter. And, you know, add like a texture that you don't really want. So I'm just going to peel this up real quick. Nice white flesh. And uh, depending on what time of year you get them, they're really super sweet. And um, Are they super sweet right now? They are not super sweet right now. Just going to cut out the core. Get rid of the seeds, just like a regular pear. And as you're doing that, we've got John Craven. And Hello, John. Sherry Heslip says hi. Sherry. And Salvador, Salvador Dominic. Called you the food sensei. Ah. Ah. Uh, and we have uh, Rui Manata as well. Happy New Year's, Eric. Looking forward to the new recipe. You as Which, well. Where, where will they find the new recipe? The new recipe will be in the file section of the Grateful Chef Facebook group. All thanks to Lynn. My friend, can you post the recipe? Just give it to me. I'll post it myself. Asian <laughs> pear. It's cut coarse. Just throwing it in the blender. I think I'm going to use it all. Again, I'm not putting this really on meat today. Um, onion, we're not going to do the whole thing. I'm going to do, again, about a half of it. Coarse chop. That's it. In the blender. This blender will make easy work of it. So I would use the other half to do the, diced, the sliced onion, which I will do. Because I will eventually put this marinade onto meat. Just not tonight. Nine cloves of garlic. I put in an extra for good luck. Nope, and it doesn't want to go in there. And then this is two tablespoons of sesame oil. And that is your basic marinade for bulgogi. You ready? We're going to start real slow, honey. Yeah, it's not too bad. So while you're blending, uh, yes. Jay Judge, I'm sorry he's late, but he is with us as well. He's always late. He's in another time zone. I am. And he had a snowstorm. Yes, he did. They basically want just this to be liquefied. About it. That's all you need to do. It's that, was, that simple. That wasn't too bad. Yeah. And I'm putting it in a container because I'm going to use it later. See how nice and smooth, no chunks, exactly what you want. All right, and this goes away for later. We also have Leanne Melly with us tonight. Hello, Leanne. That would be Aunt Leanne to the kids. Oh, Aunt Leanne. I told her to be here. Yeah. 
Awesome. Uh, and Paul Boney, you recognize Jerry. Bing, bing, bing. Way to go, man. <laughs> well, I figured yay, 90% of the people wouldn't. He, but did, I knew. He, did, he did ask Jerry or Neil. So. Oh, okay. But it, was, it is one. Jerry. Yeah. I am, after all, the grateful chef. All right. So one thing I want to do, because I am... Uh, so one thing on the stove. This is called japchae. It's a very popular street food. It is basically made from sweet potato noodles. And what's going to happen is as they cook, see some of them are clear cellophane. It's going to, uh, they're all going to turn clear. It's got vegetables in it. A lot of times it's got meat. Um, it's just a very popular street food. And uh, it's really delicious. It's very, it's not very sweet. It's sweet. It's just the, one of those comfort foods. I'm just heating it up till that gets uh, nice and done. And we are pretty much done. And so this is the part where my cooking job is almost over. And our guests are going to cook their own dinner because that is fun. And while that's cooking, I just wanted to point this out. I almost forgot. Oh well. Uh, while you're over there, we have Jamie Parisi with us. Happy New Year to you, you and I. You too, Jamie. So if we weren't going to do the Korean barbecue thing on the burners, I told you, you typically it's cooked in a pan, but this is also available at a Korean market. And what you would do is you would lay the bulgogi in here and then cook it over a charcoal fire. I've done it on a gas grill as well, and it just all the little edges get nice and crispy. And then you would do the lettuce wrap thing that we're going to do. You answered my question. Thank you. What? What is that thing? No, no. Whether I could do it on my grill. Yeah, and you can use it as a picket sign too. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we've done when it. You have grill. nothing to say. Yeah. And John Craigan also wishes us happy birthday to his two favorite internet stars. Again, that would be you and I. Happy birthday. No. no. Oh. Happy New Year. Oh, Happy New Year. I, I may have said birthday. You did say birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I'm just going to cook this up a little bit more. Would would you, New Year's Day. So would you please get me some New rice Year. bowls? Happy birthday to you. Get me some rice bowls? Yeah. Happy birthday was on the 31st. My trusty rice cooker. If you don't have one, I recommend it. Makes amazing rice. Let me see, can I move the camera? No. Oh boy. Where are you going to? Right here. Alright. I want people to see. I want them to see the transformation as the noodles turn clear. And it's just as they cook, they just turn clear. It's almost done. This I too bought at the Asian at the Korean market because I could. And it was there and it's delicious. And to show everybody everything in one episode, take way too long. Yeah. Here for three hours. Alright. Call it a day with this. Right off the plate. Awesome. Love it. Delicious. That can go on the table. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Do some rice. And then we're going to move over to the table. And you're gonna, we're going to see how great cooks we have here tonight. I'm going to actually take, take us over to the uh, table now. All right. That would be a great idea. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Nice sticky rice in my rice cooker. I used uh, Japanese sushi rice. You can still hear me over there. Keep talking. All right, almost one, two more. Okay. We're gonna go over. Watch everybody sit. Can you turn the burners on, please? Uh, right here, so. <laughs> we forgot about that.
Alright. Is the flame coming on? She broke it. Uh oh. Alright. Here we go. That one's on, and then just turn it down so it's not too high. Turn it down. Good. Quick. All right. All right. So here's our spread. Look at this. So we've everything on here. We've got the duck tray. You guys can start passing this around. A little bit on. How many plates? That would be Oops. awesome. Okay. <laughs> How did nobody notice I didn't have any plates on the table? <laughs> I noticed so many plates. If there were plates, we wouldn't have been able to put all the food here. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. So this is, you know what, again, real casual, real fun. All right. So, so what are you doing next? On my next live? No. Oh. Next step. What do you what, what do you what do you We are gonna cook some new? meat. Oh, one thing I forgot. Huh. Very important. What's that? Rollins? Oh yeah. Oops. Prawns. We've got head on prawns. She must smart one. Nice, beautiful head on prawns. Asian market. I like cooking them with the heads on and the shell and everything because it keeps the moisture inside and the flavor is amazing. All right. Well. And we have uh, Becky Craig in with us tonight. Too. Hello, yeah. Becky. I'm gonna put these on. You can turn those burners up a little, guys. I'm gonna put some meat on here. There we go. So underneath these burners is a little bit of water. I'm gonna come in closer. Yeah, come on in closer. So you guys, yeah, you want to, you can start putting some, put, putting some meat on your burners. <laughs> the short ribs will take a little bit longer to cook. That's nice. Cause all you have is like Jerry on your shirt, putting food down. Nice. <laughs> So you can put a little bulgogi on, try and spread it out. Let's take a little bit of the short rib. Mm, it's already starting to smell good in here. Mm -hmm. You got the fan on? Yeah, I got a little window fan in there just because. No. And basically this is what you got. So everybody cooks their own, has a little fun. Oh my god, it smells so good. Oh, yeah. So you're going to have the sugars inside the marinade caramelizing. You're going to have the meat that's cooking very quickly. I'm flipping the bulgogi already. And just, you know, keep it moving. These are all non-stick surfaces, these, the, the Korean barbecue pans. So they're real easy to, you know, nothing sticks to it. <laughs> Once the sauce might accumulate and start to caramelize too much, you just take them and you, you rinse them off. Can you sit and do this, or just? Sit? I can sit and do this. And this is, you know, we have uh, wine. What wine are you drinking tonight with this, Lynn? Oh, we were drinking uh, Riesling. A Riesling. Yeah, it's a little sweeter Riesling. Tonight. So it goes well with the spicy. Is that what I heard? That's what they told me. No. Ah, that's what Mark Mark was told. Nice. So of course, this ribeye that I'm using was dry aged. I did it, uh, how many days? 45 days. And I did mix it with some unaged because that's all I had. And um, it should be extremely tender because of the Asian pear in the marinade. Really cool. So this is a really cool thing You get your friends together. I'm going to grab a lettuce leaf and show you how to build one of these things. Okay. You want to put the hood on, babe? Ah, uh, thank you. I am putting some gojujang on mine. I'm putting a little bit of the salty paste. Blast it. I'm 
Okay. I am going to put on some. Where's the kimchi? Thank you. So we got uh, Kevin McQueen. He said nice. Oh lucky. boy. Whose job is that? Davis. That's David's job. I should have disconnected the smoke with that thing. Uh, Patty Webb, we started using a Rackleck grill and love it. Oh, awesome. That's uh, another thing, a Rocklet party. How's it going over there, David? Get over there. <laughs> I think I'm horrible. Uh, I'm this all the time. Yeah, only the fire department will put it out with their hose. And uh, Denise Senek. Can I get those burners at the Korean market also? You can. And the, uh, yeah, the burners, whoa, the burners and the grills are all available. All right, so you can yeah, see. Yeah, the, the grill itself, the, so it's a uh, butane? Yeah, butane burner. That was, yeah, the grill itself was, just the one burner was $25. Yeah, that's uh, with a carry case. Oh, wow. Yeah, do you want to open the bedroom window? Yes. Right. When do we know the shrimp are done? Real live cooking. When they're nice and pink. Oh, you got the front door open? Perfect. And, and we got all the doors open. Oh, yeah. Hey, oh. Whoa! I'm the window. D D <laughs> David's not eating tonight. <laughs> do you want to pull it down? Save some food. Yes, please. I ate all your food already. Awesome. Uh, Scott Richards says it looks great. And we have Sherry yeah, Hesler. Yeah, what a great way to entertain. So much fun. Hey, shut up, you. Totally fun. And yeah, with these awesome. burners, you can do it outside. Wow. <laughs> what a concept, but huh? just not in the winter. Just not in the winter, but in the summer. All right, so I'm going to take some of this nice caramelized beef. I'm putting it in right. my wrap here. We're good, Matt. Thank you. Yep. Fantastic. Let's not forget to put it back up. Thank you. Nice. <laughs> You've been taking care of me. So the shrimp, the shrimp typically uh, are going to be peel and eat shrimp, you know, so not necessarily to put in your wrap, but you certainly can. Um, you can also put a little rice in there if you want, but I'm going to go old school. Meat, kind of wrap it up, and it's really awesome. <laughs> Very refreshing, and it's actually very healthy. Vegetables, there's not a lot of oil in the meat. So here we go. Mm. Super tender. This is awesome. You get the cold lettuce, you get the heat from the gojujang, you get the sweetness and the sour from the kimchi and the sweetness from the marinade on the meat. <laughs> this is a lot of fun, man. This is really good. It's good eating. It's great sitting around with a lot of people, a lot of friends, and uh, just having a good old time here. So... Garrett, you stuck in the shrimp head? How's that shrimp, Garrett? I haven't tried it yet. All right, I'm going to try it. I'm going right. suck a shrimp head on national television. Uh, we had Jay Chuzzy, so he's super jealous. And All right, shrimp he, head. Yep. Just like crawfish, it's really delicious. Sometimes the shell is really thin and you can eat it. And I'm going to try. Yeah. And you'll be happy to know that Jim Taylor called the fire department for you. Thanks, Jim. Uh, just don't tell him we disconnected the fire smoke detector. So again, cooking the shrimp in the shell with the head, the liquid has no place to escape. It stays all inside. The best shrimp you ever had. I'm sure Joe from Southern Coast of Cooking can attest that shrimp with the heads and the and the, and the shells on, really good. Sorry. So anyway, uh, Sherry Heslip, are those grills easy to clean? Yeah, they're all non-stick surface. So as they get gunked up, I'll run them to the sink, rinse them off, you know, maybe scrub it off a little bit, and bring it right back. Yeah, but the gunk adds to the flavor, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Patina. Until it just gets gross. Mm. Mm. Um, and then Sherry also recognized Jerry. Sherry recognized Jared? Sherry recognized Jerry. No, Jerry. And T okay. Tammy May mm. loves H Mark. So they're going there mm. in the near future. Cool. 
So anyway. Can you get a lot of these ingredients online? Yes, you can, oh, you actually. I'm sorry. That's All the green stuff you can get online. Um, if you don't have a market near you, I'm sure there's a bunch of sites that are, you know, Korean pantry sites where you can get all this stuff. And uh, you can be as simple or as elaborate as you'd like with this. Whoa. Is that flame? Oh, yeah, that's flame. I thought the fire was done. And um, again, really fun, really healthy. It's, uh, it's a good time. So. And Ephraim just joined. Ephraim? You're a little late because I'm about to close out. Tune in next week. We're going to do, uh, what did I decide to do? Oh, chicken? cool recipe I saw online uh, this past week. Won't spoil it for you. But thanks again. I'm so grateful for you joining me, the Grateful Chef, in these weekly recipe-driven shows. And please share with your friends like and subscribe on my YouTube channel and uh, follow me on Instagram the grateful chef underscore ee -E. get your friends involved and uh, you know be kind be nice eat well be well and we'll see you next week on cooking in the kitchen with the grateful chef peace Woo